Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce Santiago Rodríguez Jimeno, who is an architect and planner based in Madrid. He studied at the Madrid School of Architecture uh, at the University of Pennsylvania and the London School of Economics um, in Paris as well. Uh, he was a professor at the ETSAM, the School of Architecture in Madrid, a member of the Institutes of Architects there as well. He has extensive experience in regional uh, master planning, sustainable development, urban design, urban conservation and planning in many UNESCO World Heritage cities, including the ones that he's going to talk about in this um, talk. He has extensively lectured and research, um, and he is member also the Royal Anthropological Institute and also a civil aviation pilot. And you will see um, also the, the consequences of that. Um, I forgot to say my own name, actually, it's Cristina Gonzalez Longo. I'm the president of ECOMOS CIF, and we are really happy to have Santiago starting this series of webinars that we try to make to raise awareness about different professions, different competences with, within cultural heritage. And probably this that Santiago is going to present to you is one of the most complex that we have in the field when you have to deal with cities and people. So I'll leave you with Santiago. Well, thank you very much uh, to uh, ECOMOS, CIF and uh, Cristina Gonzalez Longo for inviting me to this uh, a uh, wonderful occasion to present something which is part of uh, my life and uh, many other people's lives, by the way, preservation in historic areas of Spain, a panorama of a shifting paradigm. I have to say from the start that uh, I use preservation, as is written there, as um, with the emphasis on pre as uh, uh, anticipation, which is uh, proper to planning, but uh, uh, preservation in my meaning absorbs the idea of conservation, management and all um, in, as I say, uh, in, in a Ruskinian sense, if, if I may say so. And this is the index of the presentation. In full display are five sections and they are related to the icon on the left, which is uh, referring to Historic Area Planning Action, HAPA. The first uh, section, introduction, which uh, is about some topics lives and opinions, politics, symbols, magic, realism, in a gallery of tapestries, which includes a series of about 20 uh, slides full of uh, pictures on the uh, heritage of Spain. The next is content and context of uh, historic area planning actions beginning with the cultural heritage of Spain in figures, dimension of heritage, and uh, a synthesis, which I call preservation story, which uh, tells you something about historic area planning actions. And then the case, case studies, about 18 case studies uh, presented in a map and divided in categories, early plans, coastal cities, in the cities, big cities, Andalusia, and others, including my last work in informal cities and cooperation. And finally, a summary followed by questions and answers. Altogether, is about 156 slides. And here is the introduction. And I use uh, Ruskin again with this idea of the uh, autobiography of a nation that is written in three books, uh, words, uh, deeds and uh, art. And uh, he says that uh, for him, uh, the, the, the last one is the most reliable. And uh, here we got uh, 
um, Picasso saying that art is a lie that makes you realize the truth. And that uh, the other aspect is the time. Uh, and uh, for him, and I think for me, uh, what we deal with is, is uh, present time, though we are very aware of what we, we received from the past and of uh, a duty to pass it on to the future in good shape. Um, I wish I could uh, have time to explain all those uh, pictures there. Uh, anyway, here is Cervantes, which means a lot to us. And uh, the, the uh, first uh, uh, trip to America uh, to start this uh, global um, undertaking of Spain there. And, um, and this fellow who spent 500 years reading this book is, uh, uh, was killed in the conquest of Granada, which completed the country as we know it. Uh, completed with the help of Navarra, who came a few years later. And these other aspects are when, when something wrong is happening, like the Civil War, uh, some people brush and hide. This is the inside of the Prado, today up, up there, and during the Civil War, brush to uh, get uh, um, art in a safe place. So that's what uh, it means. And um, uh, uh, coming back to the three books of, of Ruskin, there are some references here uh, taken from the uh, School of Athens, uh, Raphael's School of Athens, we have got around uh, here, which uh, represents all the uh, people who intervened over the centuries all together um, in, in uh, what we uh, consider uh, the, in, in many ways the basis of our identity. And here there are some uh, refer references in uh, dates and, and, and deeds from the uh, pre and, and Roman Hispania to today that you can uh, go over it with more time. But uh, uh, in the end, what I'm trying to say that is that uh, uh, we reach the beginning of the 19th century with a, a very rich uh, heritage that suffer a lot from that um, <clears throat> time, sorry, uh, to the, uh, I mean, the time of the Napoleonic Wars, <coughs> what they call the Peninsula War, to today. And uh, we managed to uh, save uh, most of it that was left. And the, these three aspects I want to introduce now is, uh, one is politics, which uh, there are some uh, quotes uh, by other by uh, different people, uh, thinkers. I, I uh, underlie this one, build politics, because it reflects what a city is about. That's Aristotle's point of view. And <clears throat> you see the, the flags here. Uh, those are the flags that uh, intervene in politics in, in Spain. And one of them is half mast. Symbols. Uh, uh, whenever you scratch the surface of the city, you find symbols. Uh, on top, the, there, is a, uh, there are organic uh, plants, uh, a layout of, of cities of uh, Islamic cities, and you uh, start uh, uh, very, very quickly seeing the effect of, uh, in many of them, of the, the line of the Qibla, the line that uh, represents the union of the city with Mecca. Um, down below, 
the geometry uh, here is uh, one of our um, earliest uh, planners in a way Francesc Eximenis, uh, the same surname as mine, uh, who wrote a book uh, in the uh, 14th century about the layout of cities from the Christian point of view. And this is uh, used in uh, later on in many uh, displays of uh, uh, American uh, Latin American or Spanish American in, at the time, uh, cities uh, founded in, in, uh, in that continent in, uh, in the Philippines. In, uh, and you see the, the resemblance between that and the next uh, image, which is uh, uh, William Penn's plan for Philadelphia. Uh, references of symbols, uh, Washington uh, uh, Masonic uh, layout of L'Enfant uh, uh, has been studied, the, the, uh, uh, the resemblance, more than the resemblance, the, the origin of that in uh, Aranjuez, in the city of Aranjuez in Spain. And it's quite interesting to uh, speculate with uh, the use of uh, num uh, the number 133, for this, uh, is, which is the size of the city block of Barcelona, which coincides with uh, uh, David's uh, Psalm 133, lovely psalm, uh, lovely psalm uh, to dwell together in unity. Um, there, is, there are uh, uh, family references uh, uh, of uh, uh, Cerda, uh, which uh, uh, links him, link, link, uh, him with uh, uh, the, the Masons, the, 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 the Freemasons. So, symbols are here in our cities. Uh, I was uh, uh, um, reading about the case of uh, Cusco in the shape of a puma, of a cougar, and uh, so many uh, references uh, of uh, um, uh, uh, animals and, and all sorts of uh, imagery that you can uh, follow. Magic realism is something that I um, uh, always uh, think about uh, when we see a mission as planners and, and planners involved in conservation. Uh, here I'm using a sort of fairy tale by uh, the um, um, Nobel Prize, the Colombian Nobel Prize, García Márquez, the most handsome drowned man in the world, which I uh, offer to you in sound. Uh, and it, it goes like this. One Wednesday morning, children in a small fishing village find a body on the beach that is covered with flotsam and sea debris. The men carry the body up to the village so that the women can prepare him for the funeral. Upon removing the seaweed and mud, the women observe his handsome face. He has the face of one who's called Esteban. It wasn't his fault for being so large, nor so heavy, nor so handsome. The women of the village become attached to him and dream of the wonderful man he must have been. Instead of burying him with an anchor, they let him go without one so that he can return one day. This is when the village realizes how desolate and small their town appears. After Esteban's burial at sea, the village decides to make their doors wider for the man's memory, to paint their houses bright colors and to plant flowers. The village imagines that one day a passing cruise ship will smell the flowers and the captain will point to their village and tell his passengers that it was the man's home. Well, in, in my view, there is always uh, 
a magic ingredient. One Wednesday morning. We do. And, uh, and this is just uh, uh, one example of that. Uh, is is a um, castle in the north of Spain, which has got uh, an abbey included in it, and it's uh, already 10 uh, centuries old, uh, very well kept, and it represents this combination of heavenly and earthly defenses put all together. Uh, two symbols uh, of reality, which we read differently. Um, I'm going to introduce you to uh, some aspects that are used in the presentations of the case studies that uh, will follow. And uh, they are the, the real objects that we have to deal with in uh, planning, uh, preservation planning in Spain. That is the line of uh, my uh, gallery of tapestries. Beginning with this, this is uh, Segovia, uh, and in front of it is the, the hard landscape of Castilla in Sama, but, uh, which uh, is uh, very, very colorful and uh, full of flowers in, in spring, of course. And these are views of, uh, again, Castilla, uh, Frias in the north, Avila, uh, Cuenca, uh, places these two uh, well heritage cities, and the city of Ronda in Andalusia. And this is an example of su superimposition of uh, different uh, stages. This is Cordoba, the Roman bridge, uh, the uh, Islamic uh, mosque and a cathedral on top. And these are the lines I was talking about, the different positions of the uh, Qibla. A great well stranded upon the coast of Europe, that Edmund Burke, uh, uh, quoted by Herman Mel Melville in, in Moby Dick, uh, talking about Spain, uh, something, uh, uh, well, stranded upon, he said, um, is uh, uh, interesting to see the difference of the colors used in this, uh, by this artist in, in ochre compared to the real thing, all these colorful landscapes I just show you here. These are the, the general, uh, the, the territorial system of landscapes of Spain, uh, put in pictures, and you see uh, that uh, you got uh, like a mini continent there with all possible landscapes that uh, you could imagine. Uh, from the north to the uh, to, uh, mountains in the north to these uh, volcano uh, islands in, in the Canaries. And this aspect, which is uh, very important, where, wherever you work in preservation, you, you find cultural landscapes uh, that are relevant. This is something you find as well. This is the pit of bones near Burgos, a million years of uh, 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 reference uh, of uh, the uh, remote uh, human, our remote human ancestors uh, uh, were found there and they are now it uh, plays and study in, in these uh, buildings here in the Museum of the Human Evolution in Burgos. Uh, the uh, archaeology represented here by uh, the Roman heritage in uh, very uh, peculiar uh, pictures, you find this uh, Romani, uh, Romanist cathedral on top of a um, um, Roman uh, theater that was uh, discovered recently. 
the, you see all the uh, examples of what you find everywhere. Uh, the country was crisscrossed by the uh, Roman roads, and you find this, uh, uh, quest, this uh, uh, pieces of uh, heritage almost everywhere. Uh, the ethnic sectors, we uh, had a, a, a long uh, reference of uh, uh, the, the culture of the uh, of, uh, Jewish uh, Sephardic Spaniards. And um, now we are recovering the synagogues, the, the quarters, the houses. In, in, in many uh, of the uh, places we uh, preserve. Castles and city walls are elements of structure that are always uh, present and they are pieces uh, uh, like those, uh, quite uh, um, amazing like this one in, in Figueras, which is uh, uh, got to the stables for 500 um, horses inside. Uh, more of that. And the church, the Civitas Day, uh, palaces and colleges, uh, monasteries, palaces and colleges of the bar. Uh, in in uh, in Britain, you find uh, um, country houses, and, and you you uh, find uh, the equivalent here, uh, in a way, uh, monasteries that were originally many of them were palaces. This is what I call uh, colleges of the bar and uh, there, uh, they were run by the Jesuits in the 16th and 17th centuries, and they are uh, of, uh, really huge in size. I compare them here with uh, um, uh, Schembrun and Buckingham Palace, and you see the, the extent of them, the, the, the dimension. The uses of heritage that I bring here is uh, there are two types as, as hotels, the uh, network of uh, public run hotels, uh, uh, there are about a hundred, many placed in historic buildings and also now uh, uh, um, uh, 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 regional administration uh, hotels equivalent to those which are um, uh, in increasing numbers. So um, that's a, a relevant use of many big structures. And uh, here there are some other examples of uh, um, the house of Velázquez in Seville or uh, uh, writers' uh, houses and gardens. Uh, the garden itself, and, and I mentioned here in the context of the four natures, uh, the garden, it's, uh, the agriculture, the garden, um, the um, uh, nature, and um, the artificial garden on top of uh, structures, which uh, in a way is the patio, but it's also uh, actions, large area planning actions like this one taken in Madrid, um, in Madrid Rio, which is running a, a park, I mean, it produces a park on top of the uh, tunnels, uh, 37 kilometers of tunnels. This is to uh, remind of the importance of public space in the uh, we uh, obviously like uh, togetherness, as we, uh, as you, uh, it shows in these pictures. But uh, uh, there is also time of emptiness, like uh, like now, for instance. Uh, and and to uh, to finish this series is uh, three types of situations. Uh, towns are uh, 
villages and towns as historic areas. It, this is the map of the uh, classified uh, historic uh, areas in Spain. There are about a thousand. And uh, I, I would say that uh, they are made of uh, um, so-called mina heritage. And I put mina uh, uh, in, in big letters because this is what is, is uh, tremendously relevant uh, in the end. Uh, and there is also, also a difference between the north, these two, and the south, with this uh, geometric, uh, I mean, uh, prismatic uh, sort of um, buildings. Uh, more of that. This is the other uh, uh, sort of settlement I wanted to pinpoint, which is the uh, 15 um, uh, uh, well heritage cities that we got uh, in Spain. Uh, and finally, uh, a reference to the big metropolis, including Madrid, Barcelona, Valencia, uh, Seville, uh, and um, Malaga. And uh, just to, to uh, uh, so the different uh, fabrics in the city, the organic fabric, and uh, is the case of Madrid, and the geometric expan expansion in the, of the 19th century, which uh, uh, implies a different way of acting. Some other dimensions uh, are in this list, some list, some this index, some references. I'm going to go quickly over them before starting the um, uh, uh, case studies. This is the uh, what I was telling you the uh, the moment of uh, the beginning of the 19th century. Uh, the Napole Napoleonic Wars that destroyed uh, brutally uh, the uh, heritage of Spain. And, but there, there were later perpetrators that are here. I call them perpetrators, these horsemen. Um, and I'm not going to explain that, but uh, there are quite a few uh, responsible for the disentailment laws or the civil wars that we love uh, fighting each other. So in the end, uh, heritage suffer. And this is a reference of uh, the uh, importance of uh, the Spanish heritage of the, the 700 World Culture and Biosphere Reserve. 136 are in Spain. That means one every five plus 27 in, a, in the tentative list of uh, UNESCO World Heritage, uh, and, and so on and so forth, intangible, uh, intangible. This was the, the, the movement from the 18th century of the uh, legal system, beginning with the work of the Royal Academies, uh, the development master planning uh, later on after the um, 18th century. This was mainly the, the case of the exp expansion of cities in the 19th century with uh, those geometric uh, layouts that I uh, was mentioning. The, the, the fast growing economic context uh, during the, uh, um, the middle of the, uh, 19th, the 20th century we didn't have the equivalent of the Malrolo uh, of, of France. Uh, we had to wait until the 1985, uh, 1985 law of historic heritage to uh, develop these laws of, of the beginning of the 20th century. But this one, 85, was a very important law 
he and establishes uh, the, the rulings, the, the normative basis for a, a system. And there are also uh, regional uh, uh, laws. And these are the elements of our interest, the usual ones, I would say. And um, from tangible to intangible, which is uh, been more and more important in the uh, preservation actions. References of interest and value are those and the instruments uh, from inventories to consortiums, uh, public uh, private uh, uh, partnerships, very often. And uh, these are the usual building uh, uh, listing categories uh, from UNESCO to uh, this uh, bit here, which is dissonant element uh, that we uh, uh, pinpoint to, to uh, 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 fix them. Uh, the challenges, some of them, the problems, problems and challenges are more uh, uh, on these lines, tourism, gentrification, traffic and transportation, fantasy restoration, which is always there, uh, thematic park outcomes, and uh, the challenges, including uh, the most uh, uh, recent uh, emphasis on climate change and circular economy aspects. Um, and these uh, are planning features that are attended from landscape to urban ethnography uh, or uh, financial management. Uh, this is to uh, underlie the relationship between what I call uh, large area planning action and historic area planning actions that uh, uh, interlock one into the other and uh, you can trace the importance of uh, developments in one in relation uh, to the other in, in many uh, situations. Uh, my preservation story is uh, coming from urban renaissance with uh, the reference to the Bilbao and Barcelona models to uh, urban regeneration, which uh, is uh, uh, increasingly uh, in the uh, agenda of uh, municipalities. Uh, and this is uh, the case of this uh, movement from historic area planning to large area planning and, uh, and back and to the, uh, what I uh, call three R's, the rehabilitation, regeneration, reform of building and spaces. That is uh, the case in, in most uh, uh, actions. And uh, you can see here in, in the case of, of Madrid, the movement in, in pictures of uh, those uh, lines of action from uh, Renaissance, uh, uh, urban Renaissance uh, actions to uh, different kinds of regeneration, following uh, uh, both uh, our laws and the UN uh, 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 meetings and agendas. The case studies, well, uh, case studies we are going to see with uh, the reference of what I have introduced are classified in these groups, early planning, which is uh, these cities, Girona, there, uh, Cáceres, Salamanca, um, coastal cities, 
the cities in the in, uh, Cantabric and the Mediterranean coasts, and uh, represented here by uh, Bilbao and Avilés, the, the north, northern ones, and the Mediterranean one by Valencia. The way the uh, inland cities, the way it means the way of St. James, this line of the, uh, the pilgrimage uh, uh, World Heritage itinerary, uh, and two stages of those uh, of this uh, itinerary are uh, Burgos and Santiago, and uh, big cities Madrid and Barcelona, and Andalucía, Cádiz, Seville, and Granada, and we'll uh, finish with Talavera. Uh, some of them are cities I. Uh, uh, directed the planning of uh, both uh, cities, World Heritage cities and, and uh, classified uh, historic cities uh, of Spain. This is a reference uh, of uh, the frequent uh, situation where uh, you go to hear urban uh, uh, heritage sites uh, in Spain and uh, on the other side, you, you've got nature reserves and protected land that are surrounding them. So it's uh, uh, almost inevitable to uh, deal with both aspects. And this is the map of uh, where, what we are going to see in the case studies placed in the, with the reference of those uh, uh, classes I, I explained. And this is the general criteria of uh, uh, the uh, case studies using the, um, the usual UNESCO uh, references of integrity, authenticity, and protection and management. And some questions that I probably uh, Come, it probably, they, they come out in all these uh, uh, case studies and uh, they are, um, I think, uh, rather general uh, when you uh, talk about uh, um, preservation of uh, historic cities. Well, these are, this is the first case study I wanted to um, present. Uh, Girona in uh, Catalonia uh, is an early plan with this uh, sort of uh, graphic and, and uh, <coughs> maquette material. <coughs> Sorry. And um, this is the aspect of the city that was uh, bombarded by the uh, Napoleonic troops uh, at the beginning of the 19th century and uh, now is uh, a wonder wonderful historic city, uh, very relevant and with a liking of uh, color. And color was uh, the reference for an action that was taken in the uh, 80s to uh, uh, act up upon the uh, uh, bleak facade of the city in front of the river. And, sorry, uh, just uh, wanted to mention this, is, uh, um, uh, there are references of this uh, uh, early, uh, I mean, um, more recent um, actions taken. This is uh, of the 19th uh, and uh, with um, actions on rehabilitation, integration of the city in the natural environment, new mobility, and uh, more recently uh, actions that are uh, uh, referred to uh, regeneration, uh, the health uh, services section, and the strategic plan of tourism, and 
uh, also uh, a strategic, a strategic plan of, uh, for social inclusion. Uh, Kafir is, uh, uh, is a world heritage city and uh, one of my cities as well. And um, it's uh, on the line of San Gimignano, but with less towers because they were cut uh, by uh, our uh, queen, uh, the first uh, queen Elizabeth, uh, the Catholic, in, uh, at the end of the 15th century. But anyway, it's, it's a wonderful place in many respects. And it's got this uh, amazing uh, buildings and spaces. With this austere facades, uh, with the touch of uh, Renaissance and Baroque uh, uh, entrances. These are uh, references to the, uh, I was mentioning before that uh, the uh, existence of uh, um, Jewish uh, quarters in, in many cities, and this is the case of Catharis. And these uh, are palaces built after the um, uh, yeah, uh, 1492 uh, by the people who went to, uh, or families, noble families uh, who uh, married, like in this case, the descendants of the uh, people conquered in uh, America. This is the palace uh, Toledo Moctezuma which tells you about the history of uh, this place just by mentioning those two names of uh, Spain and Mexico in this case. These are the references of the um, review of UNESCO of, of the plan we produced and uh, we uh, managed to include a buffer zone which uh, uh, multiplied by seven the size of the property. And they are uh, telling here in this review, review about that. These I'm not going to go over it too much because it's, it's a case that uh, I'm uh, studying. Uh, much to my surprise, there is a controversy here. Uh, they are completing a brain road outside the area that was uh, protected by, the, by UNESCO, which is uh, uh, cutting across an, uh, an itinerary between the city and uh, the sanctuary that is just in this mountain here. Well, I leave it there and hope it is not as damaging as one uh, thing. Um, Plasencia is also in that area of Spain. Plasencia, uh, Monfragüe and Trujillo. Monfragüe is, is a natural park in between two historic cities and is uh, in UNESCO tentative list uh, for uh, Mediterranean landscape and also for the relationship between um, the landscape and uh, the historic city. And here uh, is uh, the case of Plasencia, again, one of my cities, which has got two, uh, one Romanist cathedral that is uh, being, um, I would say, in a crude manner, chewed by the uh, Gothic cathedral. Uh, and half of uh, one is there and the other half is here. It's, it's a very peculiar case, not the case of Salamanca where the, the both are still, but the, these are uh, um, interlocking one into each other. Uh, this is Trujillo and here is the, um, uh, this horseman happens to be Pizarro, the, the man who was responsible for the conquest of uh, Peru, uh, among other areas. 
and uh, you cannot mention his name there, but uh, this is uh, remembering him in uh, the, the area he was born. Uh, Placencia, which is a splendid uh, city, we uh, did quite a lot of work to uh, recover the, the uh, city wall and to preserve all these uh, splendid uh, palaces that are there. In Salamanca, Salamanca is a, a university town, as you know, uh, one of the oldest in Europe, uh, just about the same period as uh, Oxford and uh, Paris and uh, later than Bologna and earlier than Cambridge. And uh, was again bombarded in, in the uh, Peninsula War. And this is what happened. We uh, uh, lost uh, colleges and monasteries and, but still today is a splendid city that reminds me of the dreaming spires of Oxford with these uh, uh, two cathedrals, the uh, Promenex and the uh, late Gothic and uh, these uh, colleges. And uh, these actions that are um, new buildings that are being placed, not always fortunate, but uh, some of them interesting. And this is part of the management plan, uh, emphasizing five aspects uh, or structural themes, monumental density, cultural identity, urban vitality, landscape and uh, citizen participation with explicit uh, reference to immaterial values and assets, as uh, couldn't, couldn't be otherwise, in, in a university city anyway. The coastal cities we are considering here uh, are Bilbao and Aviles uh, in Valencia. I think the, the three of them with the reference of brand uh, buildings uh, which uh, uh, are um, argue, arguably uh, revitalizing um, the uh, historic uh, area uh, or um, the, the, the life of uh, uh, some of uh, particular areas within these uh, uh, cities. This is the, the aspect that uh, I would like to show in, the, in my tapestries of the um, uh, sort of uh, cities and towns that you encounter in the north of Spain. And uh, we pass uh, to the case of Bilbao, which uh, is well known in many respects for what I mentioned, the brand buildings being placed there. Uh, here is the, the, the old uh, city, which uh, is a stage in the um, uh, St. James's Way in, uh, of the north and was a, a fisherman's uh, town and then a very industrialized um, city uh, which uh, uh, had a, a very bleak atmosphere before all these actions were taken in the past decades. Uh, it's uh, a UNESCO city of design and uh, uh, the influence of this sort of action is uh, spread over a, a, a regional area with, uh, in the case uh, he, uh, presented here, is with the wineries of uh, Rioja, both in Alaba and in, in, the, in the community of, of Rioja, of La Rioja. 
Uh, Avilés is another case of uh, actions, in this case, to regenerate uh, another industrial area in, in the harbor, which were uh, very contaminated, and then they uh, did a, a good job there, uh, and both in terms of the uh, natural upgrading and also the preservation of the uh, uh, historic city. And this, uh, the, uh, this is the, uh, the other coast, the uh, Mediterranean coast, uh, with uh, examples of uh, these uh, uh, um, towns you uh, find there. And the case of Valencia, which is... Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I, uh, this is a well heritage uh, site. Uh, it's the Silk Market, which was the end of the Silk uh, Road, coming all the way from China to here. And uh, the preservation plan that is being implemented now, with these references on regeneration and green tran uh, transition. Well, I I'll leave you to you to to read, but anyway, this is, uh, these are some uh, features of, of this city. Uh, the, the, the river uh, was uh, uh, responsible for, for a terrible flood in the 60s, in the 60s uh, decade, and it was moved to a southern uh, place, and the empty area of the old river uh, was uh, um, transformed into a into a park with uh, um, features like this by uh, Calatrava the, the, the park was uh, um, the, the design of uh, Ricardo Bofil and um, and you see some aspects of uh, the city, uh, both the, the modern effect and the historic area has got a, an important uh, city center. The way is uh, the way of St. James is uh, a 21st century medieval pilgrimage trail that is uh, also uh, world Heritage, and uh, 300,000 people uh, used to, before the, the pandemics, used to walk, uh, bike and ride the 900 kilometers, so you had time to think uh, about uh, life in 30 stages of 7 to 10 hours walk a day. Uh, two cities are uh, going to be considered in this uh, inland itinerary. Uh, we, call, we call it the French way in northern Spain. And this is these are uh, uh, views of the what you find there in terms of heritage and landscapes. And uh, the first uh, city uh, the first stage uh, I'm going to consider is right in the middle of the of the St. James's Way is Burgos, which uh, again was one of my cities. And uh, it, it is interesting in many ways, as I say, as I say, it's a lovely city with amazing museums. And it's also that a paradigmatic uh, well-heritage city to be. They are trying again, but they didn't succeed on uh, 2014. And uh, the cathedral, which is uh, uh, World Heritage, um, was surrounded uh, with a line, including the historic uh, center of, of Burgos, 
as a buffer zone, which is a pity. I mean, he's doing a good job, but anyway, not enough, not good enough. And these are aspects uh, of uh, this uh, city. Uh, a prize here was uh, given to, uh, awarded to a restoration of uh, uh, an old uh, monastery. Well, the monastery of San Juan. And, uh, and here is something which uh, was probably responsible for not becoming a, a well heritage city, which was a plan to build uh, tall buildings not far from the center, which I hope they reconsider. In this uh, amazing uh, 12 uh, kilometers uh, boulevard that I, they produce uh, using the old uh, itinerary of the railway that was moved to the north. From This is the old uh, itinerary. The tracks were moved to the red line. And so this uh, crossing the city was, uh, uh, is now a, a a 12 kilometers uh, um, boulevard. Um, Santiago is, uh, well, the most amazing city. It's uh, but, uh, very well known. I'm not going to talk much about the, the glories of Santiago. Uh, I'm going to talk about this. This is the old section of the old uh, the, the city center of, of Santiago. These are detailed uh, maps, and you see this is in scale. Is the uh, new well new is already built um, um, uh, uh, Ciudad de la Cultura, City of, of Culture of uh, Santiago. And, uh, but I, I, I just to, uh, want to mention uh, uh, buildings that uh, are being produced there that are relevant in my view uh, in terms of shape, uh, size, volumes, and uh, integration. And uh, all with the reference of the old orchards and gardens that are still and itineraries that are still uh, included in the in the uh, city. This is, uh, by the way, the union the uh, two and a half kilometers apart of the city of culture and the, the city center. And uh, as I call it here, the landscaping Eisenman, which was the, who was the architect of these uh, buildings, and they are now producing what they call the Galician forest in between. So, in the end, I hope everything will blend. Madrid and Barcelona are here just to do, to. Um, mentioned two important uh, historic centers. And, um, this is Madrid, uh, the, the cataloging system, and a reference to documents that are in the Museum of the History of Madrid, uh, which are, um, in a way, uh, documents of anthropology uh, in the detail in which they express what the city was and still is because there are monument uh, buildings here and pieces of furniture and tapestries that are uh, you, you can see today uh, this is uh, the uh, we call it uh, uh, well, the, the, the city all native for the um, 
arrival of one of the kings of the 18th century, Charles uh, the third. And uh, two more references to uh, uh, quarters that are uh, uh, quite uh, something uh, if you in terms of uh, the presence of uh, lit literary people like uh, Lope de Vega or Calderón or Cervantes living uh, at one point in this uh, section of Madrid. All this uh, generation uh, the, of uh, the, what we call uh, 1927 generation, which includes uh, uh, Lorca, Buñuel and Dalí, among others. This is a reference to this uh, huge uh, uh, action, large area planning action of Madrid Rio, 20, uh, 37 kilometers of underground tunnels were dug and on top they produce these gardens that are being used by mainly vulnerable areas that are in the surroundings. But uh, uh, also is a, a piece of, of landscape now for the uh, historic center of Madrid, which is uh, uh, just uh, uh, in, uh, there on the other side of the river. You see the, here the, 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 the kind of uh, uh, actions that were taken. This is uh, one of our main Baroque uh, bridges and uh, the, the motorway runs underground beneath it. Um, and some actions that are now being taken, the, uh, a green road on the line of the uh, green, uh, the green belt, uh, that with this idea of mitigating the uh, the effect of uh, climate change, uh, the, the heat island mitigation. Heat island is a problem in, in Madrid in summers, and uh, they are producing that as well as other features like. Uh, uh, which uh, uh, got to do with mobility and uh, regeneration by uh, adding green zones and actions like this in the area of uh, the North South Avenue, the area of the Prado Museum to up to the north. And well, and, and many more actions on the line of regeneration. Uh, And these are buildings, uh, new buildings, well, new or that were built uh, in the past uh, decades. And uh, in, in, the, in areas of the historic center and the uh, 19th century expansion. Barcelona, Barcelona uh, is, uh, the city of the three cathedrals, in my opinion, uh, the cathedral proper, the, uh, Basi uh, the uh, basilica of uh, uh, the sacred family, and also the beautiful church of Santa Maria del Mar. And uh, here you, you got the transformation of the uh, cathedral of Barcelona uh, at the beginning of the and beginning of the, of the 20th century. So uh, a rather recent transformation. These are actions taken. I'm going to talk about them in the next slide. So I'm not going to, not in this one. This one again are buildings placed on the uh, uh, area, the historic area of Barcelona with this aspect. And uh, in a, something that was uh, considered a, a successful um, action, which started uh, in the years 80s, but uh, now was uh, reconsidered what they call the uh, Barcelona model of action uh, in a more uh, uh, critical way, I, I would put it, 
not not always uh, representing the, the the positive aspect but uh, yes uh, underlying this uh, problem of uh, gentrification that came with uh, these actions taken on both sides this is the the center of the ciudad bella and these are the two uh, districts el raval and uh, santa caterina and san pera and um, uh, well, there are mentions to the micro pockets of uh, uh, both uh, uh, gentrified, so to speak, uh, areas and vulnerable people areas that are uh, uh, there uh, confronting each other. Um, of course, there are other opinions. I, I offer here a um, summary of some of the uh, opinions uh, written uh, lately on uh, this uh, Barcelona model and uh, uh, critical and not so critical. And these are other actions that uh, the super block uh, action that is uh, uh, trying to transform among other things this uh, system or this network of green areas in in the uh, 19th century expansion and produce these uh, other result uh, in terms of uh, green spaces uh, is a is a practice that reminds me of the uh, of buchanan uh, um, traffic in towns, uh, 60s uh, uh, approach. Uh, Andalusia uh, is uh, another uh, um, set of case studies. This uh, is the system of planning from the regional to the provincial and then to the local. And these are the cities uh, that I was going to consider for different uh, aspects. Uh, Cadiz, which was the city uh, by the sea, uh, with this uh, naval reference always, uh, you'll see it in, in the next picture. Uh, this was uh, taken from the Great Armada, but anyway, it was uh, uh, what they received ev uh, twice every year with the uh, fleet of Indias uh, coming all the way from America and back. And these are views of uh, this splendid city with the Roman theater and uh, cathedral. And this is, I think it's the Ayuntamiento with this uh, the reference of this geographical, splendid geographical position. And uh, I just wanted to underline this uh, action on uh, dwelling uh, rehabilitation, which uh, it was remarkable. Seville is another case um, which uh, is interesting. It's a, it's a very large uh, historic center divided in uh, for the purpose of planning in, in smaller areas with uh, this uh, detailed planning like this one uh, in the area of the Alcazar and uh, the cathedral and uh, with this uh, general archaeology and archaeology of architecture at work and also uh, this typological guidance of uh, this stratigraphic analysis that were carried out there. And the importance of uh, the domestic gardens uh, with this splendid aspect and this arguable uh, feature, modern feature that uh, were, was placed in, in the historic center very successful in terms of public, as you can see in this picture, 
which uh, is is just on top of uh, they what they the archaeological site of the uh, Roman city, which is just underneath. From shapes to symbols, uh, some examples from all over the world uh, of what happened there. This is the cathedral, and this is what they produced. Uh, a tall building that uh, Icomos was uh, very much against at the time. But it's there. And uh, some references of uh, studies of uh, uh, height and shape of buildings in, as I said, in, in, in many different places from Moscow to Washington to mentioned too. And another of my cities, in this case Granada, and this uh, section of Granada, the Albaicín, which is a wonderful place, I advise you to go if you don't know it, uh, which uh, is uh, uh, very well preserved, in my opinion, despite all the fragility of the of the uh, quarter of the buildings and it's uh, got uh, these jewels inside this is now been restored is a is a um, um, islamic bath and this one too and this is a water reservoir of the system that uh, uh, irrigated the, the the city and the gardens and this is the reference with the Alhambra uh, and Albaicín, which is just in front of it. And <clears throat> the opinion of UNESCO about it, uh, remarkably well preserved, this combination of uh, architecture of different uh, moments in history and um, always with the reference of uh, this dialogue between Alhambra and, and, the, and the quarter. The dialogue with the Alhambra, landscape planning we uh, produced. And aspects, this is the, uh, the city wall around the Alcazaba of Albaicín and there as if it was nothing, but uh, it's uh, the Alhambra, which is uh, <clears throat> as wonderful as you know. Um, Microclimatic studies we carried out, and color studies. This is the type of the uh, 250 gardens we uh, classified there. And the domestic architecture, uh, Islamic and Christian, so to to say, to simplify, and uh, this is what you find there with these facades, and this is the pieces of our study, and other people work like uh, Valentina Pica uh, thesis, very interesting, and this is uh, this is part of a our studies of typology, uh, including the study of, of the caves that are still there in the Sacromonte area. And this is bits and pieces of, of a study of uh, thermodynamics, which is uh, very, very relevant in this uh, quarter. These are the areas of systematic uh, rehabilitation we defined at the time and uh, the work, the important work of the uh, regional administration in restoring uh, for uh, public housing, uh, the infills, the detail for the infills, and also transportation planning we produce, and some reference to public participation in this case uh, with uh, the, uh, this uh, association uh, to uh, 
restore a city that was damaged burn in the civil war and they are not they, they were restoring it is complete now uh, among other things uh, getting uh, some money if, from viewers who went up to the tower of the city of the church to see this wonderful view and uh, and now to finish uh, some other aspects uh, other uses of, of the paradigm that uh, comes out of uh, all these cases which uh, could be one-to-one -one applied to informal cities or all over the world i ha i had the chance to meet people working in mumbai and, and i think we agree on the uh, parallels of both uh, actions and also here yeah, another aspect of regeneration of touristic cities in the coast and finally a reference to the 32 um, world heritage cities in latin america and the philippines uh, which uh, were uh, founded and designed by spain some of them were there before as we know Cusco and Mexico City, among others. But uh, uh, there's, there's uh, a, an interesting action now being taken uh, by the uh, co uh, cooperation, this uh, institution of the Spanish um, Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, and, uh, which is uh, uh, implementing this uh, um, school of craftsmen in many of these cities splendid cities that were very well kept as uh, 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 unesco uh, uh, mentions here uh, the references of the, the the cities i mean sorry Montelio should go back. Yes. The uh, well, these are references for for the uh, to to reach this uh, year the compilation of ordinances by Philip II, that was responsible for many of these outlays of of uh, cities or layout, sorry. And uh, a final mention to this uh, Talavera city, the city of uh, the ceramics that was uh, classified as a historic center by uh, a recent work. And uh, is part of the belong used to belong to the 600 uh, historic centers that are still to be classified in Spain. And these are examples of the product that uh, in the end deserve the award of World Heritage for Immaterial uh, Assets. Uh, it was uh, combining the production of the Talaveras of Talavera in Puebla, in Mexico. I think I'm well away from my time. So this is what we've seen. Um, you got my summary here for you to go over it. And hello. And uh, I always uh, mention this which uh, i'm not going to go over it but just uh, think of this paradigm shifting from asset things to assets activity and from urban renaissance to urban regeneration and thank you very much for your patience christina is producing this uh, activity um, trying to revitalize uh, some areas of the historic center that went down in 
in livability in uh, buying uh, premises that were most of them empty. And now they uh, are planning to place uh, revitalizing activities, some sort of commerce that is uh, relevant. And, and that is going to happen uh, all over the place, I think. It's going to happen, it's happening, yes. Is that what you meant? Or uh, yes, Laura, is I think there. Do you want to add something, Laura? You need to unmute if you want to talk. Uh, maybe it's Hello, first. Laura. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere a question. Uh, of course, it's compulsory. Uh, public participation is, is established in, in the law, and you have to uh, uh, produce uh, all the necessary um, actions to uh, uh, give uh, uh, a platform for, for it. And, um, well, I, th I would say in all my plans is one of the main features. Uh, I wouldn't I, I was trained as an anthropologist, as you probably know, and uh, I always uh, am interested in um, um, in that uh, in, in applying my uh, uh, knowledge to that particular aspect of uh, um, public participation, and um, I. Uh, do that in all my plans. The, the last one I mentioned is, is the, is, is, it was applied in a very intensive way with all the, the uh, possibilities from the media and from uh, uh, interviews and, and um, drawing by people uh, proposals and all sorts of uh, things uh, one can imagine to uh, um, give uh, flesh and bones to the plants we uh, produce. And, uh, but uh, I can mention many, many of the um, uh, examples I, I brought uh, in the case studies are, uh, as I said, produced with this uh, reference always. So um, it's, uh, it's like a standard aspect, but uh, of a great uh, enormous importance, I, I, I think. It, it's not conceivable to, to build a plan without, to produce a plan, to design a plan without uh, intensive uh, public participation. And I think I answer your question, I hope. <laughs> Thank you, yes. Um, I have to say, I understand this is very, uh, something that you do the regulations to, to do it. In a, in, a, in a way in which is not just a tick. In many places, you know, uh, is regulated, but uh, uh -huh. I, I would say that I, I do it in a different way, in, in a very personal way. I just go there and, 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 and walk the place from uh, one corner to the other and talk to everybody. And uh, I do plans that way. Uh, uh, Christina knows it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think I think I, I didn't mention, but I was lucky enough to work uh, for my final years of my degree with Santiago, and he's actually the reason I went then to study conservation. So, and you know, the, the scope of doing this is hopefully we inspire uh, future generations to take on this very difficult job, which I personally find too difficult for me to do. <laughs> so I wanted to ask, ask Colin Santiago, why, what do you would recommend people to go um, through your path? Or what do you think is the most important aspects to kind of for education and training to, well, to you, give people you, to, to get into that sort of job? <laughs> Well, you, you have to have a passion that bends your heart. <laughs> <laughs> That's the summary. <laughs> I think is, that, that is the secret. Uh, these places <laughs> are so wonderful. They tell you so much about the history of people and, and the, their comings and goings. Uh, and you, you feel so identified with them that, uh, I mean, it's, as I said, it's, it's a passion. A real passion. So um, I uh, really recommend, if I may say so, to uh, to to do that sort of of uh, planning in very involved 
with people. You know? That is uh, people of the present and of the past and thinking of the future. So again, time. <laughs> and I, I think this is so important because these days, you know, we have a lot of this standardized stuff that, you know, consultation, but what it means, you know, maybe consult, then you don't really care what people say, uh, but you have done consultation where other people may look like imposing where they're actually caring because they are make, putting much more effort in doing the plans because they go on research and talk and and, you know, it's, I think there is a lot of to discuss, uh, sometimes maybe politically incorrect to discuss, <laughs> but we need to, uh, I think, discuss um, these issues because they are very important to actually how we do it. No? Uh, I think Estefania has another uh, question. Santiago, uh, presentation, I'm one of Christine. Is that yes. from Chile? <laughs> That's from Argentina, actually. Argentina, wonderful. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, I'm one of Christina's former students. Uh, I've That's been wonderful. master class in Edinburgh now. Um, uh, just, just curious because I was, I was reading uh, some theory uh, about yeah cities and conservation, and I came across Aldo Rossi, who mentions the case of La Alhambra precisely. Yes, and he refers to it as a, an example of pathological permanence rather than a propelling permanence. He compares it to some buildings that now uh, are home or host markets or places where people still can go to and do their daily lives. And instead, La Alhambra is, is kind of a, a moment frozen in time itself. He refers to this as a pathological Element. Of course, Aldo Rossi is <laughs> 50 years old uh, now, uh, his theory, but um, I don't know, it's, it's like an interesting uh, discussion topic, I guess. So I wanted to know what your opinion was. My opinion uh, about using um, uh, buildings of the past and, uh, as archaeological sites or something like that. Uh, yes, that, something that hasn't really evolved. Does it, does it become a sculpture? Is it well, uh, uh, it's funny because once I was in a uh, uh, round table uh, speaking about that with other uh, professionals, and one mentioned the similarities between Cusco and Machu Picchu and um, Granada and um, La Alhambra. And mm -hmm. I said, no, no, nothing to do one with mm -hmm. the other. Uh, one is uh, very far away from the city and Machu Picchu, you have to get a train, uh, 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 very, uh, uh, get, get uh, up on those slopes. Uh, you, you never know that you are, if you are going to end up there or somewhere else. And uh, 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 La Alhambra is, is uh, I think, is alive completely. Is is uh, is uh, dialoguing with my uh, quarter, the Albaitin, mm -hmm. every day. And, and, and Albaitin is learning from the Alhambra and Alhambra is learning from the Albaitin. I mm -hmm. mean, there, there are no um, um, sultans and uh, Islamic uh, um, residents, but mm -hmm. uh, it's completely alive too much uh, at times. Um, I remember when I started working in Granada, that uh, I used to go to a hotel nearby, and before breakfast, me myself, I just walk around the Alhambra and visit it as a, as if it was my garden in my building, mm. and, and then I return to the hotel for my breakfast. So now that you cannot do, but uh, it's a very much alive. Uh, monument day and night uh, yes tourism but also many other activities happening mm -hmm. uh, conferences okay. music uh, whatever you see it's, it's alive and it's okay. just in the center of, of granada no? <clears throat> sorry and, and this is what it's all about you know urban conservation is like you know it's for everybody really because you, you can do a building but has particular uses cities are really used by everyone. Um, Don, do you want to ask Adele? I saw Don 
all the way from the beginning to the end of the uh, this uh, <laughs> my speech. <laughs> so, just going to ask you, ask you if I may. First of all, thank you for the, the presentation. Uh, absolute cornucopia of fascinating material. Uh, Thank you. One could spend so long on a lifetime, I'm sure, as you have. Um, in Edinburgh, where I am, uh, we have many projects which were, uh, I'm particularly interested in the aspect of consultation. Um, we have projects which are, have been pretty much driven by public interest rather than the consultation following on from a project yeah. which is already committed. Um, and that's a great thing that can happen because there are always commercial interests in the background trying to propose something else. Uh, but often it is this, uh, that, what was that phrase you used, the, the, the passion which bends the heart of people locally, which has um, directed a, a project to, you know, a building, in fact, to, to be conserved. How often do you find on the whole that that is a deciding factor in a, in a project? Is, is that fairly rare or does conservation it's, sometimes uh, make How often I find, it? sorry, I couldn't get that part. How often does consultation make a, a critical difference to the decision to, con to yes. preserve a building? Um, well, uh, in most of my plans, I produced an institution that uh, goes in parallel with the management of the plan, which is uh, called the... Um, um, well, it's, it's, a, it's a group of people selected to follow up the, uh, the, uh, the working of the plan uh, in a monthly basis. And uh, uh, people of all uh, uh, sort of capacities uh, are joined there and uh, and is uh, compulsory to get their point of view on uh, proposals. And uh, that is used uh, uh, apart from the work that uh, other institutions, uh, not necessarily of the administration, do in relation to uh, uh, particular uh, proposals. But uh, um, I don't think we use uh, that sort of uh, consultation that much, uh, as you mentioned. And um, uh, this uh, institution uh, uh, we produce, the follow-up institution, uh, is uh, um, uh, people uh, coming from uh, the districts of the uh, uh, centre, um, the representatives of associations uh, and so forth, um, are uh, part of this uh, follow-up uh, committee. Yeah. So I, I don't think it's uh, very different, this sort of uh, working from the way in many respects, many of the cities of my, uh, historic cities of my experience were in a way built um, the Islamic city had the Al Arif um, uh, institution, who, who was uh, some sort of an architect, uh, but uh, very respected, that was always uh, in care of what was happening in every corner. And uh, there was always, a, um, he was always surrounded by, by people who would inform him uh, in taking the decisions that were, uh, later adopted. And um, so you can learn from the past and apply it to uh, this, uh, the working of these institutions. And I think that it, 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 it was uh, uh, useful in, in most of the plans I carried out. And the results are uh, telling that uh, we, uh, well, it didn't happen what happened in Seville in my plant. Uh, you, you didn't see this uh, tall building place in front of, the, of a cathedral. Well, the case of Burgos, but I was, um, they didn't manage to, to build it so far. It was a, a plan by uh, this team, Swiss team, uh, Herzog and De Meron, who produced that. And, uh, and I think, 
that plan was, in my opinion, uh, I'm probably wrong as always, but uh, in my opinion, it was uh, the reason why in 2014 they didn't manage to get the uh, award of World Heritage City, you see. So, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I, I love listening to uh, uh, people uh, uh, with the uh, uh, capacity, um, but um, I don't think it's enough. No. Yeah, what is clear is a different uh, planning system as well. And what will be, I think, interesting is to compare uh, the, you know, the, what are the outcomes considering these different processes that we have planning yeah. no? in UK and in Spain. That will be interesting. Anyone yeah. listening for a PhD, I think that will be an interesting one to, <laughs> to have because, again, uh, you know, we have to really see what at, at the end the results no? of having something is very particip participatory. But then what is actually produced is that as good as something that maybe is not us in, in sense of going and expanding the consultation. It's very difficult. Uh, of course, you want to listen people, but you you want to have also educated opinions, uh, not just I like it or I don't like it, as sometimes we hear. <laughs> so it's, it's very complicated. And as I say, you know, it's also you know, it's can be politically incorrect in terms of seems like you don't want to include people, but you know, at the end, and again, back to the competences, uh, they are, you have professionals involved with professionals' judgment, and that has to be really listened to, <laughs> otherwise we just close the shop. <laughs> I don't know, uh, that's my personal opinion, yeah. but uh, we have Charles, uh, if he wants to make the questions. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Yes, uh, our um, culture minister, Oliver Darden, has, has, has summoned uh, our 25 heritage bodies together. Um, and he says he wants to defend, I'm not quoting from, defend our... Oh. Oh, defend our culture. Yep. our culture and history uh, from noisy minority of acti activists constantly trying to do Britain down. <laughs> um, you know, in a way, I think um, what he's kind of saying is that history was written by the victor, uh, 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 and that was certainly how history was written in the past. But I, uh, there's a, a lot of dissent about this, and I, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm shocked by this, and I don't think it's going to get anywhere. Um, but I'm wondering what your view about um, who. Uh, Owns history now, and how that should shape uh, um, uh, how that should shape our environment. It's almost like um, we need to transition from the old pattern of um, the victorious writing down what history is to be perceived as, and so on, and to a new model. And, and I'm just wondering what your view about how that should work for the future generations. Um, well, um, I am. Uh, obsessed by what I call um, minor heritage. And minor heritage is the flesh and bones of uh, historic centers. And minor heritage is not built by the victors, it's built by, by people. And um, of course there are references which belong to the identity of uh, places that uh, tell you a lot about uh, th their identity, their, uh, their character and purpose in, in history. But uh, uh, wh whoever misses the point of view of the minor, so to speak, uh, misses the point of view of the historic centers. And um, and that is a, a, my experience, my experience and my passion, again. Thank you, that's, that's, that's a very, very interesting insight. <laughs> yeah, I think there is a lot of discussion. I, I hear a lot of, this, um, I'm involved as actually as ICOMOS in this European project charter project defining the competences and, um, and cultural heritage in Europe and it's, you know, this you know, the, the discussions are really, things are changing <laughs> and this changing uh, paradigm that um, 
Santiago has presented concerning cities uh, and is also the, the culture, what is history, uh, the political events are coming into the equation and it's really very important to have these conversations, I think, and, and define because there is a lot of misinformation and I think, again, uh, educated people have to go and, and talk and, and say things. Um, concerning that and um, i think it's the democracy can be misunderstood sometimes it's not just everything everybody everywhere <laughs> there are certain things uh, for certain places and so yeah i think uh, a conversation to take place and i, I taking also ideas for future events so thanks very much for your contribution and we have luis sorry about we are overrunning but please feel free if you need to leave the meeting <laughs> luis do you want to ask the question I can't. You can't. Okay, I'll, I'll read up for you. Um, so he's curious about conserving stone built heritage in Spain. Um, if the conservators, oh, you are there now. Oh, no, there you are. Yeah, you want to do it? Yeah, I see you, but I can't but hear you. You have to mute yourself. Finally. Hello. <laughs> I think I'm. Okay. Yeah. Good. Hi. Hi there. Thank you. Uh, yes, the question uh, is, is related to my, my work here in Scotland. Uh, I do a lot of stone matching when it comes to conserv conservation. And I studied this from another e-commerce member 25 years ago, uh, Rosa Esbert, who taught us how to study rocks, you know, as a geologist, in order to conserve buildings properly. So that didn't exist. That field 20 years ago didn't exist. So another colleague and me, we were pushing for that. And I think in 20 years, it has made a lot of difference to the buildings. So my question is, does this happen in Spain nowadays? Or is it something that fizzled out and people forgot when, when conserving buildings? Uh, it's happening. Um, this, your sound comes to me uh, very blurred. So oh, sorry. Uh, I, I don't know why, but uh, I, I so couldn't hear it's about, you. Um, Luis works for the British Geological Survey in Scotland, and he does stone matching, um, which is replacing stones uh, that are that they match the original. Um, yes. And he's asking if in Spain um, there is similar kind of work that you are aware of. Um, well. Uh, replacing uh, any sort of material for new one you mean yes um well stone in particular stone in particular well um there are uh, I, I recently visited a uh, um visigothic uh, in origin um church near uh, toledo and um it's a pity I, I haven't got the picture here because uh, it would be uh, you wouldn't need uh, my uh, uh, words for explaining. I mean, to for answering to your question because it's all there. I mean, there are traces of the actions taken that you can uh, identify, and um, in reference to missing material not uh, substitutions, but uh, missing material. And, um, uh, well, this, uh, this idea that you, you have to um, uh, make clear what you've done uh, in, in, in the building, uh, different, uh, make the difference between the new and the old, but in the end, is uh, like, um, uh, we call it in Spanish sopa de letras. Uh, it's, it's like uh, uh, sopa de letras. Uh, someone <laughs> from Argentina would uh, put it in English for me. It's <laughs> uh, a soup. I don't know. I mean, it's like um, putting together too many things and confusing. Confusing. Uh -huh. because you, you don't know what you're looking at uh, in the end. And uh, But sometimes, it's, uh, it's very difficult to, to avoid that. I mean, uh, it's, uh, you have to, 
make sure uh, that uh, you guarantee the stability of, uh, of buildings and and the general composition of the i think is a matter of uh, being uh, able or not being able uh, so to speak i mean having what i call if you got the the hand the proper hand for doing that um, and put it in 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 very bad terms but uh, uh, i wish i had some uh, pictures here to explain okay. myself but it's good. <laughs> I, I understand i understand Thank you. All right. Thank uh, you. The same like uh, the planning issue, um, that's similar. So it's quite different. Yes, that's quite. In yes. the intervention in here, that in Spain, and that makes that the replacement is not as necessary. As, I, I don't know if, it, I, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, I don't know if, if that was, uh, in the end, was the, the purpose of this question, to ask me about building and, uh, getting my point of, point of view about uh, how to uh, restore a city, which yes. is, uh, uh, I mean, you, you can use both um, um, criteria uh, in the same way. And, uh, uh, well, I, I mentioned at the beginning the, the question of time. Time. Uh, you, uh, you do magic you do magic when you preserve, because uh, you are not bringing the past to life, to, to, to life yes, to, uh, but uh, you are, you are um, doing something uh, different. You are preserving and you are uh, uh, making sure that you uh, uh, respect that idea of authenticity that is uh, uh, absolutely uh, uh, necessary, and uh, but uh, in the end you have to. When when we when when I was talking about the infills in in um, uh, in the urban fabric of the city centres, you have to consider what uh, that uh, in many cases you have to produce something that blends properly with the past and um, at the same time you are not supposed to uh, produce uh, fakes, fake uh, uh, historical fakes and um, in that is a, a double-edged um, matter. I mean you can cut yourself by going too much in one direction or the other and uh, well, I'm quite pleased what, with what happened over the years in that quarter I mentioned, the Albaicín in front of the, the Alhambra, which we uh, regulated the general composition without uh, inducing to the, to the fakes, in my opinion. And uh, uh, we didn't uh, preclude, we didn't uh, um, impede the, the uh, modern architecture, which uh, I'm very fond of modern architecture, but uh, 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 we were talking about uh, Edinburgh before, and um, I find um, damages from modern architecture there that, I, that I'm very sorry about. Um, and I uh, say that with enormous respect, both for that splendid city, unique city, and for the good quality of architects that uh, were working there. And at the same time, in my opinion, uh, sometimes you find that a bit of uh, restraint would be uh, very good for, for the place, especially especially in places like Edinburgh that were built in, 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 a, in, well, I would say in one go compared to my Roman and Islamic and so forth cities. So you have, a, uh, I mean, you can build a theory of how to, to work in, in a city like that as opposed to other 
city centers with different histories. And, uh, and sometimes I, I, I got the impression that, uh, as I said, a bit of restraint would be very good. <laughs> Okay, so, um, we are overrunning big time, but uh, I don't want... I'm very sorry, I'm very questions. sorry. I, I, I <laughs> it's okay, my... it's okay. Um, just, uh, as I say, anyone needs to leave, please do. But, you know, I don't want to cut interesting conversation. Uh, Shahira, are you there? Maybe not. Uh, all our lives ahead. He was asking about the politicization of heritage in the case of the Mosque Cathedral of Cordoba and how they may uh, how that may impact in the historic preservation, practi uh, particularly when it comes to public discourse. Um, well, the case of Cordoba, you mean the mosque, uh, the, the mosque cathedral now. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, uh, well, it, it is in the papers because uh, at one point uh, uh, they didn't know who the, the owner was of, of that uh, building. And uh, uh, like uh, 20 years ago, it was inscribed in the name of the church, of the Catholic Church. And uh, now uh, left-wing uh, parties are uh, claiming that that was a public building and uh, shouldn't uh, uh, be in the hands of the church, which is uh, in a way is a contradiction in terms because it's a church. And, uh, uh, and I don't think it makes sense uh, to, to to use it otherwise uh, as um, for the time being. Uh, I don't know, uh, churches are used for many purposes in Spain, but uh, um, that is a, an, an icon of uh, uh, some uh, belief, the Catholic belief. And, and, and you find these uh, controversies that uh, are um, inflamed uh, by uh, political um, uh, purposes, I really not. I'm really not interested in in uh, how politics. I am just a planner. <laughs> <laughs> Shahira is there. You want to? I I I have many troubles in my life with politicians. <laughs> uh, I spend my my life suffering uh, from them. So talking about training, I don't know how we can train people on that because that's, I think important training. <laughs> I don't think uh, you, uh, you you are never trained for that. I mean, you, <laughs> you just suffer it. You just suffer it, and uh, and it's, it's very contradictory to uh, to the purpose that we all citizens. Um, uh, have in relation to historic centers that, that, that these uh, political fights don't go uh, and don't take you anywhere. And um, the more you uh, touch the opinion, you, you uh, consider the opinion, of, not only the opinion, but uh, you include people in your undertakings is a, uh, you are going to prosper in your purposes. Uh, that is the case, but uh, that is not always well understood. It doesn't matter the, whether it's the life or, or the, I mean, the left or the right uh, of the political spectrum. They are all the same. They have political ideology and they, as someone said recently, I'm not going to mention the source, but uh, uh, ideology sometimes um, dismantles um, identities, it dismantles uh, uh, um, the, the social fabric. Uh, anyway, that is a very... 
Thank you. Old point of view. <laughs> yeah. And thanks for Estefania, who has uh, translated Sopa de Letras into Sp English in the chat. <laughs> oh, it's you. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so I think we just bring this um, to a close. Um, thanks so much, Santiago. I think this has been really um, interesting. And we have nice um, things in the chat from all over the world. Uh, thank you for the. And great lecture. So we, there will be following few other lectures in the Ecomosif. So please keep looking at at that coming. And in the meantime, again thanking Santiago. And hopefully we can follow up this. We have planned something maybe concerning Edinburgh, as he mentions few things. And uh, will be maybe more in a format of a, a roundtable. I will let you know about that. So thanks very much, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>